Hi, it's Dwyer. It's April 22nd, 2024. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. <clears throat> Bettingangle.us, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, this weekend, Ryan Garcia beat Devin Haney at 143 pounds, right? The weight is very important because how this fight's remembered is going to be how the observer views the weight conditions, right? That's three pounds more than 140 where Devin Haney is champion, right? Devin Haney loses to Ryan Garcia, <clears throat> a viewer here online, a subscriber, Put it best, you don't follow a puncher, right? Why Devin Haney, who does not have Ryan Garcia's power, is following Ryan Garcia, walking into shots, is anyone's guess, right? The strategy costs Haney significantly. But even with the bad strategy, one has to ask the question of whether Haney would have a chance given the CompuBox numbers that show Ryan Garcia landing 50 more power shots. 50 on Devin Haney over the 12 round fights than Haney landed on him, right? So you had a power display on Saturday night. This morning, it's Monday morning here in California, USA. This morning, at 8.19 a.m., in fact, right now, if you go to an excellent site, boxrec.com, B-O-X-R-E-C.com, you're going to find that that website, believe it or not, at 147 pounds, has Ryan Garcia ranked ahead of Jaron Boots Ennis. Right, let me repeat that. They have Garcia ranked ahead of Boots Ennis. Let me also point out that in the last 24 hours, Ryan Garcia has said, look, I want to go to 147. I'll fight Boots now. Right, words to that effect. Right, I'm giving you my interpretation of Ryan Garcia's comments. And Boots has responded by saying, look, he's food. You know, would I fight him? Of course I'd fight him. Now, let me just point out my take on it, and it's early, right? It's very early. But this is a major moment for boxing. Understand, Ryan Garcia's in rare air here. Normally, fans follow titles. In this case, fans are following the boxer. Right, Garcia, again, not close to the 140 weight limit. He's three pounds over. Normally when we see that, we ask ourselves questions like, did this guy take training camp seriously? Right, it's a bad miss, so bad, even the powers that be didn't say what they normally say, which is, hey, come back in a couple of hours. Right, you know, go for a job, go to a sauna, come back in a couple of hours to try to make weight at the re weigh in so we can try to save this fight. They didn't even say that. Rather, Ryan Garcia had to pay money to Devin Haney for the 143 pound fight to take place. It's been announced that the sanctioning body is going to allow Haney to keep his title at 140. So now we have Garcia calling out, in my opinion, given the circumstances, the fact that Terrence Crawford is planning on fighting at 154. He's no longer at 147. Given the fact that that was Errol Spence jumping in the ring at the Fundora Tim Zhu fight afterwards, saying, hey, it's time for you to fight the big dog. Given that Errol Spence looks like he wants to fight now at 154. Folks, 
the king at 147, in my eyes, is Boots Ennis, the guy right now, according to BoxRec.com, that's ranked lower in that weight class than Ryan Garcia. Now, Jaron Ennis recently signed with Match Room. That's Eddie Hearn's group, right? Just understand, Haney's with Match Room. Match Room worked with Ryan Garcia's group, Golden Boy, right? Oscar De La Hoya, Bernard Hopkins. And those two groups, Match Room and Golden Boy, were able to give you this Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney fight. Understand, it should be easy for the same two teams to get together to give you Ryan Garcia against Jaron Ennis. Right now, there's an article this morning on BoxingScene.com. Let's talk about the boxing ecosystem here. And it's a great article, and they're saying, hey, this shines a light on the four kings. Right? The one man who beat Ryan Garcia. Gravante Davis, the former Gravante Davis, now Abdul Wahid, right? They're also talking, of course, about Teofimo Lopez. But understand, Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia are the other two of the four princes, right? But just understand, that Gravante Davis fight was at 136, Davis already has a win over Ryan Garcia. Davis himself is a cash cow fighter. Right? Does Davis want to fight Ryan Garcia again? And if so, would the weight make sense for Davis? Right? His fight against Garcia, four pounds below 140. Garcia's recent fight, seven pounds above where Gravante Davis fought him. Let's talk about Teofimo Lopez. Now, I personally think Teofimo Lopez against Ryan Garcia at Madison Square Garden sells out that arena. It would dominate the sports page in a town with two NFL teams, uh, two NBA teams, uh, two baseball teams. I believe if you announce Garcia versus Lopez... That would take over the back page of, you name it, Newsday, New York Daily News, the New York Post. Right? But Teofimo is represented by top rank. Understand, boxing is balkanized. Top rank is Bob Arum's group. Would they want to make the deal? given the fact that Garcia's a puncher and he's really half a weight class above Lopez. Right, let's think this through. Top rank also has Ramirez. They have other fighters at 140 who would be blockbuster fights that would interest the boxing cognoscente. Right, so if you have a champ like Teofimo, and if you've been hearing the fan dissatisfaction, right, understand, even Timothy Bradley didn't like the way the scoring played out in Teofimo's last fight against Jermaine Ortiz. Right, given that there's another group that didn't like the way the scoring played out, in the Teofimo Sando Martin fight, right? If you're top rank, do you put in your extremely talented 140 pound champion against Ryan Garcia, who was 143 for this fight, but might well be up around 147 for his next fight, right? And Golden Boy. Would they be able to work out a deal with Bob Arum, who used to be Oscar De La Hoya's promoter, when De La Hoya was on the very short list of the very best in the sport, pound for pound? 
right? So let's just say I would not be surprised, given these facts. If Ryan Garcia's next fight is not against Boots Ennis, right? My early take, and again, it's early. You, you don't know what's going to happen in terms of the weight. You don't know what you're going to hear out of training camps. You don't know what sparring partners are going to say. Um, you don't know, and this is the history of boxing. Right? Look at the end of Sandy Sadler's career. Look at what happened to Errol Spence. You don't know if some fighter is going to hop in a sports car and end up in a car accident that impacts their career. Right? But if the fight were to happen today, I would take Boots Ennis, who has, believe it or not, a higher knockout ratio and that's fighting at higher weight classes he has a higher knockout ratio than ryan garcia i would take boots ennis over ryan garcia right one of the rules of picking fights is you really have to think for yourself right when i was on box rack and i saw boots ennis rank below ryan garcia i thought you've got to be kidding Please make this fight so I can quickly bet on boots. Let me just point out too. It's in moments like this that you realize who some of the fighters in history were. The reason why I believe boots would beat Ryan Garcia is because Ryan Garcia isn't remotely as mobile as Boots Ennis is. Boots is not only a hard hitter. Boots is not only a guy who is ambidextrous. But Boots is a guy who moves around the ring as he's destroying you. So there is a blueprint fight. And I want people to look at it because it'll help all of us understand this fighter better. First, let me just say, it's a fight between two Hall of Famers. Floyd Mayweather, Hall of Famer. Arturo Gatti's a Hall of Famer, right? There's a generation out there that remembers how blood and guts Arturo Gatti was. Those Gatti-Mickey Ward fights were classics. When you thought about tough fighter giving it everything he had, Arturo Gatti was one of those guys on the short list that came to mind. But understand, Gatti did not have... Floyd Mayweather's athleticism. He did not have Mayweather's legs. I have the fight posted, a link to the fight, a highlight of the fight, on Gambler's Advisory right now. It's worth looking at. Understand, Mayweather's career knocked out more than 50% of his opponents. He's a harder puncher than people realize. Understand, too, Mayweather came up from lighter weights earlier in Mayweather's career. Mayweather was knocking out almost everyone. Right? One of my favorite fights, the Diego Corrales fight, understand, going into that fight, Corrales was viewed as the puncher. Not Mayweather. Right? Mayweather's really fighting bigger men later in his career. When fights start going the distance... Uh, people like Oscar De La Hoya, for crying out loud. Right? It's because Mayweather, like Manny Pacquiao, gains weight and, of course, gets older that the knockouts slow down later in his career. But understand, even with the last part of Mayweather's career, when he's going the distance against people like Marcus Maidana, for example, Andre Berto, for example, right? Understand Mayweather had so many KOs that Mayweather's KO percentage was above 50%. Well, let me just point out the Arturo Gatti fight is riveting because, and I pulled a punch in the description on gamblersadvisory.com, Mayweather actually has a better left hook than Ryan Garcia. On Gambler's Advisory, I said, this is a Ryan Garcia left hook 
with better offense and elite defense. Right? Folks, when you look at the clip on the link at gamblersadvisory.com, you're going to notice that Mayweather can throw his left hook from far more angles than Ryan Garcia. Also, on the telecast, you had another fighter, Sergio Mora. He's one of the best announcers in the game, right? He's a guy who at one point beat Vernon Forrest, right? Excellent fighter who beat Shane Mosley twice, right? Just food for thought. Al Heyman can thank a lot of his empire to Vernon Forrest, if you know the history, right? Well, just to understand, Mora was a little frustrated with Ryan Garcia, because Ryan Garcia was in a Philly shell. And Mora's point was, look, if you're Devin Haney, you have to attack his body in situations like that. Right? Haney looked a little confused. It took Haney a few rounds to figure it out. Haney did figure it out. But when Ryan Garcia was in his little Philly shell, and keep in mind, Garcia hadn't thought it through like a Mayweather thought it through. Garcia's up against the ropes at times in that Philly shell. Haney couldn't figure out that he needed to throw chopping right hands to the body. He should have also, in my opinion, thrown left hooks up top. Right? Throw it around the guard, for crying out loud. Um, you know, you see Mayweather do exactly that in the Arturo Gotti fight. Gotti has nowhere to go. Mayweather is just too damn fast, too damn intelligent. And I'm telling you, Floyd's real edge is mental, right? He's a freak athlete, but understand, you see the boxing and you understand Mayweather has thought things through. A prime example of that is this footage. Because here he is against Arturo Gotti, you could not imagine a Gotti being unable to land at least some shots against an opponent, right? Gotti is an aggressive fighter. And here, Mayweather has the spacing down so good that while Mayweather is landing a bevy of shots, Gotti can't hit him. I mean, folks, understand... <laughs> A lot of defense is spacing and sequencing, right? The person who gets it is Chris Eubank at middleweight, right? More dangerous than people realize. But a lot of defense is where you are in the ring when you start throwing your shots. Mayweather is in front of Arturo Gotti. He does not have a hand up. He's going to town on Arturo Gotti, and he is not getting hit. Gotti is so busy covering up and turning away that Gotti does not know how to either stop Mayweather's punches or find Mayweather. Right? I want you to look at that Mayweather footage. Now that you've seen 12 rounds, 12 rounds, of Devin Haney, who his father was saying, hey, this is the Haney era, right? Haney does not have Mayweather's offense, does not have Mayweather's power, right? And Ryan Garcia, who has power, has hand speed, throws a beautiful left hook, which, by the way, was Mayweather's best punch, but does not move remotely like Mayweather, does not come close to Mayweather's defense, right? So take a look at it. Boots Ennis can move like Mayweather. Another guy who can move, but you have to catch him in the right fights because this guy is a different person every fight. Is Terrence Crawford, right? One of the secrets to these fighters Right? Let's name the trilogy here because they're very much alike. Mayweather, Crawford, and Ennis is the fact that 
all of those guys hit hard and they all move. It might shock some people to hear that Boots Ennis has a 90% knockout ratio. Right, 90%. And Box Rack has him this morning ranked below Ryan Garcia. Right, think about that. You know, that level of movement would throw off a Ryan Garcia. Right? I believe we might see that fight happen because I believe Garcia wants to fight the big fights. Understand at this stage of Garcia's career, he already has financial security. I believe this is that rare fighter who does not want to stand in line to get big fights. Right? The fastest way to bore Ryan Garcia is to tell him who he has to fight to qualify to fight for the title. Right? He just beat one of the champs at 140. I believe Garcia is the kind of guy who can say to his promoters, I want Boots Ennis. Get me that fight. And the promoters understand that they have one of boxing's premier cash cows. They're going to try to accommodate him. Let me also say, too, and I know we're way off the grid here. Legacy-wise, there's less risk for Ryan Garcia in fighting a Boots Ennis than there is in fighting, let's say, a Teofimo Lopez, a fighter from 140, right? There's less risk in fighting a champ at 147 because, of course, should he lose, we would say, okay, well, he moved up in weight so fast that we're going to give him the benefit of the doubt. Understand, there are fans who realize that this guy has fought Luke Campbell. This guy's fought Gravante Davis. This guy has now fought an unbeaten Devin Haney, right? Understand, Davis, when Garcia fought him, unbeaten. Devin Haney, when Garcia fought him, unbeaten. If Garcia attempts fate again and fights an unbeaten, Jaron Ennis, the fans will stay with him if he loses that fight, even if he gets knocked out, because they'll say, look, this guy's exciting. This guy is real. This guy is fighting tough opposition. This is the guy I'm rolling with. So understand where that leaves us, gamblers, right? I think Garcia is a guy who is bold enough to fight Jaron Ennis, right? He needs to realize that Ennis, with a 90% KO ratio, is not going to follow a puncher, right? Ennis is going to move. He's going to create openings. Then he's going to be sudden. He's not going to be predictable like Devin Haney was, right? Ennis is going to be moving around. We don't even know if Ennis is going to be righty or lefty for portions of the fight. What I think I know is he's going to be patient. If Ryan Garcia comes out like he did in the first round against Haney and is hyper-aggressive, understand a boots will back away. Right? With a 90% KO ratio, with the higher KO ratio, with the history at the weight class. Because Boots is a craftsman. He's going to realize, okay, look, I'm not going to be here for a puncher. I'm not going to let some puncher walk up to me and start throwing big shots. I win this fight if I use all my tools, which include movement. Those are my early thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. I think Box Rack is more entertaining these days than an actual <laughs> listing of the fighter's abilities, right? I've had people in the past tell me, no, Box Rack uses a algorithm to figure out where fighters should stand, right? Just understand 
Ryan Garcia lost the fight already at 136. Boots is unbeaten. Understand, Ryan Garcia is a blessed puncher with an 80% KO ratio. Boots' KO ratio is at 90%. Understand, if Garcia fights Boots, let's hope Garcia doesn't ask for a catch weight. Right? Garcia, having been the victim himself of a catch weight, needs to realize that there are some skeptics out there who view him as a weight bully. Right? A fight between Garcia and Boots has to be at 147. How Boxrack can look at a guy with a history at 147 who has a better record than Ryan Garcia, <laughs> who has a higher knockout ratio, and then decide that they're going to rank him behind Ryan Garcia, should raise eyebrows. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. I hope you leave them in the comment section of this YouTube video. Again, the website is boxrec.com. By the way, I mentioned Teofimo Lopez, right? You have Subrael Matias, another excellent fighter, great left hook. You heard me mention Ramirez, boxrec.com today as the top-rated fighter at 140 as Devin Haney, right? Would love to hear your comments on that in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.